I'm Lauren Valdez and today I am reading my statement of purpose that got me into MIT's Masters in City Planning program. This whole month I'm doing a series on applying to grad school, so please check out some of my other videos on tips with applying to grad school. I'm also hosting regular office hours about every week where I will answer your questions or give you feedback on your essays. So you can find the links to those things below and please like and subscribe and let's get into it. Off the 405 freeway, just south of Los Angeles, there is a smoky skyline of oil refineries that extends for miles along the coast. This is the community of Wilmington, California. This industrial zone is home to the Port of Los Angeles, two rail yards, and the highest concentration of refineries anywhere in the state. For three generations, my family, just one family among a vibrant Latino community of 60,000 people, has called Wilmington our home. While I love my community, I am overwhelmed by the unyielding power these toxic industries possess and frustrated by the disjointed approach to improving health equity in Wilmington. It is impossible for me to ignore the deep structural inequities that keep Wilmington residents living in a hazardous environment with little access to quality health care. And for this reason, I am determined to pursue a city planning career with a focus on public health. After graduating from college with a degree in architecture focusing on international development, I returned to Wilmington and quickly became engaged in the struggles of a city that I saw with new eyes. My good friend Kat and I started a blog called The Wilmington Wire with the humble goal of sharing information that accurately represented events and issues in the community. We started by reporting local events. Later, as our confidence and audience grew, we began to delve into complex social issues affecting communities of color. I explored the region's extremely high incidence of asthma and its relationship to the nearby refineries and port. I attended neighborhood and city council meetings, summarized important discussions from these meetings, and highlighted the troublesome consequences of new projects, like a proposed new rail yard. Within a few months, we became the go-to contact for any group that wanted to make an impact in Wilmington, fielding calls from nonprofits, researchers, radio shows, and newspapers. When we started, all we wanted to do was inform people. As it turned out, and against all odds, this information led to action. The Greenlining Institute, a multi-ethnic public policy research and advocacy institute, asked us to organize a demonstration against two refineries in our area that had strongly backed California's Proposition 23, an anti-environmental measure. Because of our dedication to the Wilmington community and our clear sense of purpose, we were able to overcome silos, bringing groups to the table that didn't normally work together to collaboratively accomplish our goal of defeating Prop 23. The following year, I began research on a Fulbright Fellowship in Brazil studying community participatory methods for evaluating the effects of the built environment on public health in the favelas of Rio de Janeiro. I worked closely with the Center for Health Promotion, CEDAPS, a Brazilian public health nonprofit, on developing the pilot Youth Build program in Brazil. We worked with 30 youth using construction to teach basic reading, writing, and math skills culminating in a final project to build a community asset. I led the group in conducting evaluations of their built environment and its effect on their health. Through these evaluations, we mapped zones based on safety, access to healthy foods, areas of activity, and transportation, among others, and developed five, 10, and 20-year maps as future visions of their community. In the first phase of this plan, the students built handicap access for two houses whose residents could not leave due to their disabilities. The students also retrofitted hazardous homes and began a campaign to get the city to install closed sewage lines in their community. Living and working in Rio finalized my decision to go into the fields of public health and urban planning to fulfill my commitment to Wilmington. While the American dream teaches us that all you have to do to be successful is work hard, it isn't as simple for many people of color. There are so many structural barriers that make it difficult to access higher education, keep us living in hazardous environments, and fuel discrimination against us. 
It isn't enough for me as an individual to have overcome these barriers. I have to return to my roots to apply the privileges I have had to make my hometown a more equitable place, a place where others will have access to the opportunities that I have had. In order to continue making positive change at home, I need to build my professional skills in this field to match my passion. There is still such a long way to go to have a real impact on the health and quality of life of residents in my hometown. The problems we face are too complex for simple solutions. We can't address environmental degradation or create healthy communities without addressing issues of race, class, poverty, violence, and immigrant rights. Neither community members nor institutions are ready to address these issues on their own. It's going to take a cooperative approach with institutions validating community wisdom. I see city planning as an interdisciplinary field and political process that cuts across these diverse fields where social, political, and economic structures are analyzed to develop spatial solutions to creating healthier communities. This interdisciplinary approach is embedded in the city planning program at MIT. I admire MIT's focus on the social implications of planning as a practice and believe that the hands-on problem-solving program will best prepare me for my future work merging the fields of public health and urban planning. I plan to cross-register courses at the Harvard School of Public Health and enrolling in many practicums to further my interdisciplinary study. CoLab is a perfect fit for my work in Wilmington as I have experience sharing community-based knowledge, which I am ready to integrate with professional and academic resources. I met Professor Javier Briggs and Philip Clay at the Open House, and they have been particularly influential in my desire to study in the Housing, Community, and Economic Development Program group. The diversity of students, wealth of resources, and remarkable faculty at MIT will prepare me for working at the intersection of planning, public health, and policy. As our world continues to rapidly urbanize, we need to be prepared to address the environmental health hazards imposed on disenfranchised communities locally and globally. There has never been a more critical time for planners, public health experts, and community members to be speaking the same language. As someone who has experience moving between the sectors of design, health, and activism, I am dedicated to helping bridge the gap between these three disciplines. The master's degree degree in city planning at MIT will give me the skills I need to become fluent in that language and incorporate it directly into my future efforts to make Wilmington and cities like it more sustainable, healthy, and equitable. You can also download the PDF version of this essay when you sign up for my newsletter where I keep you up to date with all my latest resources. Subscribe in the link below.